So Meshtastic is a simple off-grid mesh network that's used to transfer short text messages. It's really neat, but until recently, most development has focused on these little nodes that, you know, they have these little OLED displays or they don't, and you usually have to have a separate phone with an app on it or use a web UI to actually interact with the mesh. So that means you have this device plus a computer or phone. The major use case I have for Meshtastic is for backup communications, like if cell networks go down or the physical infrastructure of your city might be unavailable. In those conditions, I don't want to run my full computer or even have to have a full smartphone just to communicate long range over text. So enter the T-Deck. This is completely standalone. It has its own keyboard and its own screen. And uh, I think, you know, if the Meshtastic community could focus on some Halo devices like this, like this is, this is what I thought of when I thought of Meshtastic when I first heard it described. If they do that, I think that the Meshtastic adoption would increase quite a bit. Uh, the current state is you, you know, you buy a tiny node or you buy a few of these things and you use them with your computer. A lot of that setup process and, and the mental overhead with it kind of relegates Meshtastic to radio enthusiasts. You know, a lot of times when I post about Meshtastic, I get the response when they see this setup where I have this in my phone, I thought it was supposed to be off-grid. Doesn't requiring an app that has to be downloaded from an online app store make that kind of impossible to do? Well, yes, it, it does. I mean, technically it doesn't, and people that use Meshtastic know this, but forget about trying to explain how local Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections don't require a working internet connection. At that point, you've already lost people's interest and they're not going to join the mesh. But that's why I love the T-Deck. It has its warts, but it's the first truly standalone Meshtastic node that I've used that would be useful to me in an emergency, especially with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and it lasts a few days. Not only that, the default firmware on here retains the ability to interface with a phone app. So if you wanted to get to that depth or use your phone to manage things too, you can do that. And it also has a web UI that can run over Wi-Fi. But the UI on this, this is not the actual UI that ships with it. This is something else. The UI that ships uh, by default right now, I'd, I'd say it's pretty much trash. At least if you want adoption from anyone outside the world of like arcane RF and ham enthusiasts that are used to QRPing and DXing and all those kind of things. Uh, the default interface requires lots of little keyboard shortcuts and things to do anything useful. But over the past few months, the, the main reason I bought this was I started seeing some people posting on Reddit and on YouTube comments and things about a new T-Deck UI, uh, which is this UI that I'm showing you right now. People were posting about it all over the place, but when I searched for, like, how do you get that, the only thing that came up was a YouTube short, and uh, the YouTube short said, here's the tutorial, and I was like, well, where is it? Apparently, I was watching the YouTube short in the desktop interface, which on YouTube doesn't have the same features that the shorts interface does, which is a link to another video. Even in the shorts interface, it's hard to find it. Anyway, that's besides the point. YouTube shorts, I hate. Eventually, I found the full video, uh, but the instructions were in the description and formatted in YouTube formatting. So I actually rewrote them and expanded on them a little bit and put them onto this blog post. But basically, you need to download some firmware from a CI build. This is all experimental. Now, first of all, do not post any support requests for this stuff uh, to Meshtastic. Don't ask for help with it. This is like wildly experimental. It is not supported at all. And the de devs have actually said like, please don't, don't do this if you don't know what you're doing. This is really experimental. The main thing I wanted to see was how this interface worked compared to the default one. And it's about light years better than it. Uh, but if you want to do it and you have one of these TDEX, you can look it up. But anyway, getting into this UI, it, it does look pretty, but it is pretty rough. There's there's a lot of things that are working and a lot of things that aren't. Uh, but it does have, it has this node list, this node list that's actually better, I think, than the one that you get on your phone, uh, in the phone app. It, it gives me all the information I need. Um, there's a lot of little things about Meshtastic that are, you can tell it's, it's, it's kind of a beta type of thing right now. I think as time goes on, it'll get more stable, reliable. Uh, but even today when I was testing these two, I was, I was sending messages from my other node that's in this office. And sometimes it would make it to this one, but not this one. And they're like five feet from each other. And sometimes it'd make it to both. So again, this, you know, this, this is highly experimental, but I wanted to see how it worked. But the main thing for me is like this, this to me is Meshtastic. This, this is cool. And for people that are deep into Meshtastic, you can have these nodes, you can put one in your attic, put one in your car, whatever. Uh, but this is like when I think of off-grid communications, this is what I'm thinking of. I'm not thinking of having a phone app and a node or having my computer connected to a node. If you're in ham radio and you're, you know, you're used to that kind of thing, that's, that's one thing, but that's not, that's not what's going to increase adoption to the point where a lot of people have these nodes running around 
and you'll have a good solid mesh. In our community here in St. Louis, we actually have, I don't know, uh, 20 or 30 different nodes that I've seen driving around. And every once in a while, we'll have a, a balloon or an airplane go overhead and, and connect a few more of us. I think that this is the future of Meshtastic if we want to get more adoption and get people on the mesh. The, the problem is that this is, this is broken enough and it, it's even hard to get that it's not going to get there anytime soon. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about this because I, I installed this firmware and I think this is really cool. I got this uh, 3D printed case for it off Alleycat, I think, on printables maybe. I bought the 915 megahertz antenna for it and a little SMA adapter uh, cable that goes in here. And a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. I 3D printed everything with the switches and all that stuff. And it works great. Um, I'll have links to this stuff in the description. Uh, and it's, it's kind of cool. I, I think uh, LilyGo has actually recognized how popular this is becoming and they made the T-Deck Plus, which is a little more expensive, but it includes a custom-built case. That's another step towards adoption, having a prepackaged device. Like this was uh, from MuziWorks, the H1 and the R1. Without these, I might not have gotten into Meshtastic because I didn't want to buy a little circuit board and 3D print something and buy an antenna and put it together. I just wanted to buy something out of the box. Now that I've done that, I'm getting other things and I have a lot more Meshtastic nodes and LoRa things, but these kind of things pre-built out of the box with a good interface are what will take Meshtastic from being a fun little hobbyist thing to something that might actually be useful to many people, including in disaster zones. Anyway, this is a third channel video, so I don't have any really outro or anything. I just wanted to talk about this thing, and I hope that you have a great weekend or week, depending on when you're watching this.